Good day, folks. I wanted to show you today how I was able to simplify basically the Don Smith concept, and it really works by using the peg cell as an ion valve. Now, the thing with the Don Smith method is it's relatively simple and primitive um, ideas to make it work, but what's challenging is that at the high frequency and high voltages used, despite of the low currents, it's very hard to get rid of the skin effect where you don't want it, and the induction of the, uh, basically what happens is the uh, everything nearby will ionize and non-conductors become conductors and you end up making loops where you don't want it and you get const uh, basically destructive interference. And the ion valve is a big way for that, but it can be complex and it still requires a lot of um, interactions. And Don Smith uses various LCR filtering and bandpass and that sort of thing, which makes the device even more complicated. And a lot of the complexity basically it revolves around how to mix these signals together to get the appropriate effect. So I figured out if that the peg cell could really simplify the effect. So what I did here to minimize my current input like I've done here, this is a regular analog 12 volt power supply that feeds a, a uh, 25K 400,000 volts high frequency AC generator here. And I got the Variac and I tuned it. I got some capacitors in the back in line with the Variac here to get reactive power to make it very efficient. And I don't have the meter right now, but I tested this exact setup and it reads about 40 MA of input when I'm running this at the maximized um, resonance point like I'm doing now. Now to fix the issue with, with all that high frequency, basically the, the, the part of it we don't want, I've tried it with the uh, peg cell and it's working very well. So the peg cell let, let, lets us basically bring the current way down some more and let the pure potential pass. And it also contributes a little bit. So if it puts out about 1 MA and it starts acting as a series configuration, it'll limit to 1, 1 MA. So naturally what I'm getting at is it ends up contributing about half of that energy. So you drop your input as low as it is in half and it starts to contribute. So a very efficient system. So the output, what I've done is I connected two AC transformers. Unfortunately, they're just 16 volts, but it proves the concept. So I've put the, the a center tap basically here and basically I got one side which goes directly from the inverter. I got the inverter right down here connected to my 12 volt battery here and it's direct. So this on its own will put out, it says here, 16 volts AC, 570 MA. So that's easy there because it tells you under a load the maximum it can handle, okay? So um, what I did is on the output side, so I combine one of them here, the middle one, and then each side becomes the output here. So naturally speaking, when I don't run the oscillator, I get the normal voltage here, okay? So I'm going to show you what happens. So first I'm going to disconnect this so when I turn it on, you won't get the high frequency interaction. So I'm going to turn the inverter on down here. So the inverter is on. And you see, you know, roughly this much voltage close enough because there's no load on there. And um, it's not connected to the high frequency, but look what happens. I'm going to disconnect so I don't get a shock here. I'll connect the high frequency, which is on the other side here. So one side is the 60 hertz, quote unquote, high current. And this is the zero current, high frequency, super high voltage on this side here. And we're sharing the common ground here on each side. So what I'm getting at is this is a very simple way to use the 60 hertz. You basically are able to engineer and decide and separate your current and your potential and treat them as separate entities. So you use a 60 hertz basically to modulate the current of the 60 hertz with the uh, potential of the uh, high frequency. And that gets mixed into the transformer and that enhances the output. So I'm going to show you a very simple way to um, amplify your current here with the help of the peg cell. And this really simplifies the whole Don Smith concept. 
So I'm gonna show you this, turning it on now with the two of them mixing together. And look what we have now, almost 26 volts, 25.2. So we jumped like over five volts. Now this is a poor choice of transformers because that's all I had around you. This kind of stuff here, you're not limited so much by the process and the output, it's what you have in components. So using bigger transformers naturally will give you more output and as little as you need to notice an effect. If it's proportional, if you give it a little bit more trigger, you'll get a little bit more out. It's a ratio, essentially. So what I did here is I ran these calculations real quick with the help of ChatGPT, and I will show you what I came up with here. So I got it to do some calculations for me to help me here, because I wanted to know roughly the input and the output. So here's all the calculations for you. But the thing at first, I thought it was putting out 30, so it did it at 30, you know, so then it calculated the input is about 8.96 and the output is 15.9. But, you know, I said, oops, it's actually 25. So it redid the calculation, but still, you know, this is crude because, you know, I had analog meters and, you know, I read 40 MA, but in reality, who knows, it might be 43.5 MA, you know, that sort of thing. So at least it gives us an idea, you know, this is basically ballpark figure, but it shows us that it's an, indeed in the right direction, folks. And this is essentially based on what I got here, what I'm getting. So at 13.25 watts at 25 volts AC, I should be able to charge a battery with that. So just bringing you back here. This is what's running and it still runs really nice, 25.5. And there's no heat or anything because I'm limiting the oscillator to the reactive, making this very efficient if you understand the VAR power and how reactive power works. And this is all inverter running and the inverter is running quiet, the fan is not on because when it gets hot the fan turns on. I could put my hand on there, everything is running nice and cool. So what I'm saying, folks, is all of a sudden, basically, is it got 25.5 volts at the current of near, you know, 570. So it really brings up, if you understand, that's more power now. For basically almost for free, just by introducing frequency mixing and modulations. But again, in the typical Don Smith setup, you know, he uses a different method with Tesla coils and things like that to bring up his very, very high voltage. And he introduces a little bit more current. But with that said, he gets a lot higher output. But with that more complex setup, he needs additional filtering stages and things like that and makes. And that might be what overwhelms most people to steer away from experimenting with the Don Smith concept. What I'm trying to get at here is you can indeed experiment with it with much smaller scale. And if this kind of power, you know, if you if you just want a few watts, this will do it for you. You know, you don't need to go complicated. The peg cell really simplifies the, you know, ion valves could be pretty complex if you look at the Don Smith methods and how Bedini built them, you know. A peg cell to me is a lot easier to build than an ion valve and it offers several features, you know, enhancements that the ion valve wouldn't give you on its own. So it just makes sense to run it that way and incorporate it and simplify the Don Smith concept. And yes, it really, really works. So there you have it, folks, a gain in potential for very little input.